Good evening, good evening, good evening, New Hope. Listen, I'm so excited. This is the day the Lord has made. We are excited and glad once again to be coming to you live and to be able to, to worship God and to study God's word. I'm excited tonight about the word. Listen, go ahead, do me a favor, hit that, hit that button right there. That's the button. Hit that button, hit the invite button, hit the share button. Uh, so that you can invite all of your friends to come along and all the, your, your Facebook friends to be a part of what God is doing. We welcome all those watching on our website, www.newhopeel. We thank you for being a part. Also, we welcome those who are uh, joining us on conference call. We know that God has something great in store. I pray that everyone had a great day. Listen, you know, if nothing else, we practice gratitude today. That is another day God has given us. And we ought to be excited and glad just to be alive. All right, listen, go ahead and hit that button, host that watch party uh, so that you can make sure that you're a part of what God is doing and make sure all your friends and, and co-workers and loved ones are a part of what God is doing because I know tonight God has given me a word. It's a, it's a simple text that we've seen several times, but it's going to really bless us on tonight. So go ahead and make sure you get that word out real good. I see that we're all here. It is always a blessing every time I see the name scrolling across the screen because listen, that means God has kept us another day. We're going to get ready to pray, and then we're going to launch right into it. Amen? Amen. So go ahead, hit that hit that button, hit the invite button, hit the share button, hit the host of watch party so we can move forward in Jesus' name. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the blessedness it is to be able to come together once again to study your word. Thank you, God, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God, we ask now that you will allow your spirit to flow through this time of teaching, God, that your word may go forth unhindered and unchecked. God, I pray now that we may grow, that we may develop, that we may become the men and women of God that you've destined for us to be. God, I pray now that, God, you would, God, allow for our capacity to be expanded as we seek to please you and to grow in our time of study. God, we love you. We thank you. We honor you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right, listen. Tonight, very, very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. Welcome from Michigan. I see somebody. Sister Janice, welcome from Michigan. Glad to have you on. Uh, listen, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Y'all know where I'm going already, but listen, don't get ahead of me. Stay with me. I, I, I pray that this is going to bless you. Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse number 11. I'm going to read it from, from, from a couple of translations just to kind of lay some groundwork for us as we prepare a lot to dive into this. Look, listen to what the NIV says. It says, I'm not saying this, and this is beginning with verse 11, Philippians 4, beginning with verse 11. I'm not saying this because I am in need, I, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed, listen to this, or hungry, living in, whether living in plenty or in want. Here's the key verse that we all love to quote. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Listen to what the good news says, one of my favorite translations. Listen to what it says. It says, and I am not saying this because I feel neglected, for I've learned to be satisfied with what I have. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have more than enough. I have learned this secret so that anywhere, at any time, I am content. Whether I'm full or hungry, whether I have too much or too little, I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. I want to I teach tonight from the subject, strength for all conditions. Strength for all conditions. One of the things I want us to be mindful of is that as a believer, we are able to face different types of conditions. As a believer, it would be naive for us to think that we only have up days or we only have good days or things always are, are, are leaning toward us. But we must understand as believers that we are not uh, immune to circumstances, dilemmas, problems, and situations. They come our way. But what, what, what this text helps us understand is that we will gain strength from God to be able to endure, to be able to, to move beyond, to be able to prosper in the midst of. And see, the enemy's job is to convince us that we will die in what we're going through. 
Our enemy's job, the enemy's job is to convince us that we won't make it through. And what I want to suggest to you today is that we must understand his job of the enemy is to distort our own perception so that we will believe that we won't make it through, that we would doubt God's ability, that we would doubt God's power, that we will stop trusting God, and that our faith will, faith will become feeble and weak. As a result, when we have faith in God and we trust God, we trust in God's ability, it will change our attitude to what I call an I can do attitude, or it will give us an attitude that believes that we will always get strength for all conditions. As a matter of fact, when we understand that this strength for all conditions, that means then that no matter what we face, we have the strength for it. Paul is one of the people that, that knows best what it's like to, for, for, for God to give him strength to face a multiplicity of types of conditions. See, see the, the true test of a person is not how they do in good times, but how they do in bad times, how they do in stressful times, how they do in difficult times, because the key then is learning that you have consistency regardless of the type of conditions you face. See, it's, it's like knowing that no matter what comes your way, that you will be able to move forward. So here's what Paul says. Paul says, I need you to understand that you have strength to face all conditions. He says, I'm not saying this because I am in need, but I'm saying this because I've learned to be content. And we're going to deal with contentment in just one minute. But I want you to understand that Paul becomes, if you will, this poster child of what it looked like to have strength for all conditions. Remember, uh, at the time of this writing, Paul is sitting, uh, as he started this, this church in Philippi, he's sitting in prison and he's writing them, thanking them for their partnership in, in the gospel. If you want to read a book that encourages you on how to keep going in the midst of different types of conditions. Philippians is a great book, not long at all. This epistle, if you will, this Pauline epistle helps us to, to understand what it's like as Paul has experienced the constant support of those in Philippi, but he's also in a position where he knows that, listen, I need you to understand that God takes care of me, that God provides for me. And so here's what Paul says. It's an honor for you to desire to take care of me and to look out. He says, but I've learned something. I've, 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 I've grown to a place where I've learned to be satisfied with what I have. In other words, Paul is saying that God is able to give us the strength to face all conditions. And he goes even further. He says, not that I sense needing anything personally. I've learned to be quite content in all of my circumstances. I'm moving quickly tonight, but if we're going to have strength for all conditions, that means the good times, the bad times, the up times, the down, down times, the lean times, the times when you're confused, the times when you can't figure it out, the times when you are full of faith, the times when you're wondering, God, how much more of this am I going to be able to take? All those conditions, different conditions, times, conditions when you have money, conditions when you don't, conditions when you're full, conditions when you're empty. Though the conditions may change, Paul helps us understand that God is a God who will continually give us strength. So here's the first thing that Paul says. He says, if you're going to have strength for all conditions, we must understand, first of all, we got to learn to be content at all times. Now, 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 we're going to look at this differently because, see, we like to get to I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, that comes later, but what? But before we can get to that point, we got to understand the first verses, uh, the verses that come before it. we got to understand the context of Philippians 4.13. I know we see it on t-shirts. I know we see it at football games. I know it's probably one of the most uh, recognizable or quotable script scriptures in the Bible. I get that, but I want us to understand the text or the context in which we get to verse 13. Verse 11, if you will, says, he says, you got to learn how to be content. Paul says, I'm not saying this because I have need. I've learned to be content. I'm not saying this because I feel neglected. I've learned to be satisfied with what I have. He says, I've learned to be quite content regardless of the circumstances. One of the things that I've noticed and I'm learning as the days go past, as we are living in what I call this, this, this pandemic time, is that people have become discontent with their current circumstances. And we can't ever allow our circumstances to make us become discontent. Paul says, I've learned something. I've learned the secret that whatever situation I find myself in, I'm content. 
Are y'all hearing what Paul says? Now, you got to remember, Paul is sitting in prison right now, writing this letter, writing this epistle. And Paul says, wherever I find myself, I'm content. Wherever I, if I'm hungry, I'm content. If I'm in abundance, I'm in content. He says, I'm in content. Now, you got to understand the life of Paul. Paul did not just have a life that was a bed of ease or or, or a bed of roses or or something that, that was just easy going. No, you got to understand, Paul had been shipwrecked. Paul had been flogged and beaten. Paul had been thrown in jail. Paul had been lied on. Paul, Paul had, had, had faced a, a various various circumstances. And as a result, Paul says, I had good days, I had bad days, I had ups and I had downs. He said, listen, I understand that, that it's easy to get frustrated when things don't go your way. Somebody put that in. It's easy to get frustrated when things don't go your way. Now, if we can be honest tonight, and this evening, as believers, sometimes as believers, it's easy for us to act, watch this, like spoiled breaths. Lean in. Yep, I said that. It's easy for us when things don't go our way to act, uh, let's see, as, as spiritual spoiled breaths. Because when we pray, we want God to do everything the way we want him to do it, when we want him to do it, how we want him to do it. And there's no, there's no way where we can allow God to be God. But what this text reminds us is that, listen, you have to learn how to be content. Whatever circumstances you're in, whatever situations you find yourself in, learn how to be content. Stop, stop, stop having a lack of patience. Stop, stop having worry creep in. Stop having a, a worration begin to eat away at you. Learn how to be content. And Paul says, I'm not going to worry about stuff. I understand. Watch this. That me and God has have been through enough that I have mental toughness not to be rattled by any situation. Somebody put that in. I have mental toughness not to be rattled by any circumstance or situation. See, when you and God have history, the circumstances may change, but your God is still the same. Somebody, listen, listen, I need you to lean in close tonight. Listen, your circumstances may change, but your God is still the same. See, see, it's easy for us. We get frustrated when things don't go our way. Circumstances will change. You will have the ebbs and flows of life, the ups and the downs. But watch this. God is consistent. As a matter of fact, let me suggest this to you. If your life does not have ups and downs, which is what we call the rhythm of life, the ups and downs, the ebbs and the flows, you're flatline, which means you're dead. Come on, talk to me. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. Which means then that we must understand that our circumstances does not mean that we have done something wrong. Doesn't mean that things are, are difficult. It just means that God is still the same. See, contentment, and, and let me say this. Somebody put this in for me. Contentment can be very elusive. Here's what I mean by that. Contentment can be very elusive. That means that which when you try to be content, something always pops up where contentment begins to escape you. Just when you say, okay, okay, have you ever said, Lord, if I just get to this point, I'm gonna be straight. But then when you get to that point, you look over at somebody else. And when you look at somebody else, your comparison brings discontentment. Come on, lean in. I'm teaching good tonight. Come on, lean in, lean in. See, you say, Lord, if you just get me to this point, I, I promise you, I ain't gonna ask you for nothing else. I'm gonna be content. And God gets you there. But the moment you get there, you look over at someone else and now you compare yourself to someone else and comparison then becomes the incubator, incubator for your discontentment. And there's nothing worse than God moving in your life, but you can't recognize God is moving because you're discontented by what God is doing in other folks' lives. Run your race. Stay in your lane. Don't let what somebody else is doing in, in, or what God is doing in somebody else's life make you discontent at what God is doing in your life. He is taking care of you. He is blessing you. He is sustaining you. Every day you wake up, you ought to have a spirit of contentment because somebody didn't wake up last night. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody did not have breath in their bodies. And you can allow a time of pandemic just because you can't go out the house the way you want to, just because you got to put on a mask and, and, and travel is restricted and where you go is restricted does not mean that you can't be content in whatever circumstances 
circumstances that you're in. Paul says, learn how to be content. Learn how to thank God. Whether you're up, you thank God. If you're down, you thank God. If you're hungry, you thank God. If you're, if you're full, you thank God. If you have strength, you thank God. If you're weak, you thank God. If you have too much, you thank God. If you don't have enough, you thank God. You learn to be content in whatever the circumstances are you find yourself in. Listen, I know I know this is different because, see, we like to rush to, to, to verse 13 to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah, we're going to get there, but I need you to understand this word tonight, contentment, contentment. And some of us, watch this, some of us can't even get what God is trying to teach us in this season of, of COVID-19 because you are so discontented because you can't do what you want to do. But contentment means that you recognize that wherever you find yourself, it watch this, that God is with you. Now, now let, me, let me caution you and say this. Let me say this. Contentment does not mean complacency. See, just because, and I want to clear that up, because I, you should always be growing. You should always be striving. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying learn how to have an inner peace, if you will. Contentment is a sense of inner peace. It comes from being right with God. See, when you are right with God, when you're in a right relationship with God, there is a sense of contentment, a sense of, 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 of contentment that's on the inside of you. It is a peace that you have that you know God is in control. Contentment is this, this sense that you have. It is something that you know, as my grandma would say, you know it in your Noah. It is that, that spirit inside of you that lets you know that no matter what comes your way, no matter what happens today or tomorrow, Everything is going to be all right because your God is still in control. And listen, I need you to lean in closer. It, 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 turn your volume up. Turn your volume. I need you to hear me. Your God is still in control. Our God is still in control. He, that means that no matter what happens to us, our God is still a sovereign God. And our focus, Paul says, you want to stay content, learn how to focus on God and not on your circumstances. Learn how to focus on God and not on everything else. Learn how to focus on God and not anybody else. Because if you can just stay focused on God, yeah, you're going to have some rough circumstances, but watch this. Your life ought to be centered on an almighty God who has all power in his hands. Yeah, it's going to be rough, but you ought to have your mind and your focus on a God who will never leave you nor forsake you, who has all power in your head. I wish I had somebody. I'm teaching tonight, but I wish I, if I was preaching, I would say, won't you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't you get rattled just because circumstances change. Don't you throw in the towel just because circumstances change. You stay content. You, yep, you get a bill in the mail, stay content. Yep, yep, your job start tripping, stay content. Yep, your emotions start running wild. Stay content because contentment, watch this. Somebody put this in there for me. You, you are content because you are, watch this, sufficient in a self-sufficient God. Somebody, you got to put that in. That's good stuff. See, you have contentment because you are sufficient in a self-sufficient God. I'm going to say it one more time, one more time. See, you, you can have contentment because you are sufficient or, yeah, you are sufficient in a self-sufficient God. See, God is all you need. He is self-sufficient, which means you are sufficient in the fact that he's self-sufficient. See, God is self-sufficient. That means he can do what he wants to do without anybody else's approval and without anybody else's input and without anybody else's help. That means self-sufficient. And so our sufficiency is in a self-sufficient God. Boy, I'm teaching good tonight. Listen to me. Our sufficiency is in a God who is sufficient all by himself, which means then that when we are in our insufficiency, we have a God who is sufficient because he is self-sufficient. <laughs> Teach Dr. Hay. See, the self-sufficiency of God ought to give you contentment 
to know that no matter what may come your way, you have a God who is able to sustain himself. That means if he can sustain himself, he's there with you. His presence is there. His power is self-sustaining. His, his ability is self-sustaining. His, his, what he can do in your life is, self, is not influenced by external stimuli. It's not influenced by what you do and don't do. No, baby. He is a self-sufficient God, which means he can do anything he wants to do. See, another word, another word, another word that we like to throw around that we like to say is he's sovereign. Yeah. Somebody type sovereign in there for me. Yeah. See, when we know he's sovereign, that means then that, that your contentment is in the Lord being sovereign and you focus on the Lord. Not only if he's sovereign, he can do what he want to do, how he want to do it, wherever he want to do it, with him, whatever he choose to do it with, then his, his sovereignty helps you to focus on him being your savior. And when you know that he's your savior, that helps you see him as being sufficient. Okay, sovereign, savior, sufficient. Somebody just put those words in. Sovereign, savior, sufficient. One more time. Sovereign, savior, sufficient. So, so here's the thing. See, so you can't be content and discontent at the same time. If you're going to be content, you got to know, watch this, that God is in control. Now, now listen to this. This, this, is, this is the language. I need you to hear this. Look at verse 11. Verse 11 says, Paul says, I'm not saying this because I have need for one thing, for I have learned to be content. That's what the NIV says. Uh, the good news says, for I have learned to be satisfied. The message says, for I have learned by now to be quite content, whatever my circumstances. Uh, Y'all listen to that? All three, three different uh, versions of the Bible, they have one word that's key. Learned. Somebody put learned in. Learned. L-E-A-R-N-E-D. Learned. I have learned to be content. Paul says, I've learned to be content in all circumstances, in all situations. Which suggests then, Paul, that contentment may not come naturally. Are y'all hearing me? Lean in, lean in. Because in order for Paul to have to learn it, that means contentment was not something he just had. <laughs> See, contentment, you have to learn to be content. You have to learn to be content. You don't just show up and be content. No, no. Discontent is probably what's natural. He says, Paul says, I had to make myself learn to be content. Well, Paul, how did you learn how to be content? Well, because I believe that learning to be content is not an instantaneous transformation. Somebody put that in. It's not an instantaneous transformation. Learning to be content is something that happens over time. It is something that happens when you have history with God, when you've been in process with God and God has been developing you and making you and molding you and shaping you, then you then learn how to be content in all circumstances. See, see you can learn to be content when you know the same God who helped you last year when you didn't think you were going to make it out is the same God who will help you now. See, you ought to learn something from your history with God. You ought to learn how faithful God is. You ought to learn how God will show up. You ought to learn that God's character is who he is, that, that he is an ever-present help in the time. You got to learn who God is. You got to learn to hear his voice. You have to learn to let God speak to you. Learn to to continue to talk to him. And that's what Paul says. I've learned to be content in all conditions. As a matter of fact, he even goes on and says, not only have I done that, I've learned, watch this, that it's the secret. Verse 12 says, I learned that whether I'm in need, I've learned to be content. Whether I have plenty, I've learned to be content. Whether I, he says, as a matter of fact, I've learned it's the secret of being content. That in every circumstance, in every situation, whether hunger, I know, watch this, I've learned that when I face major stuff, minor stuff, I learned the secret. The secret is I know that God is going to work it out. See, see, Paul said, I learned to be content because I've been beaten and God was with me. I've been stoned and God was with me. I've been imprisoned and God was with me. 
I've been deprived of water and bread and God has been with me. I've been miserable and God has been with me. I'm sitting in a prison right now at, writing to the church at Philippi and guess what? Paul says God is still with me. In other words, Paul is saying I've had lots of practice of learning how to be content because I've been in circumstances that were difficult, circumstances that were rough. So now Paul says my secret is not just positive thinking. My secret is if God did it before, he can do it again. Somebody put that in. See, my secret is I know that if God did it before, he can do the same thing again. So Paul says the secret of my contentment is the fact that I know, watch this, that I can move forward. Because here's why. He says, because I can do all things through Christ. I can do. So Paul says, here's the thing. Here's why I'm, here is why I'm content. Because I can do all things through Christ. Paul, let's back up. Paul says, I'm content because secondly, I have confidence. I have confidence to persevere or to push forward in all conditions. I have confidence to keep going in all conditions. I have confidence that no matter what comes my way, I can do. Now, now y'all see how we got to I can do? We're just going to deal with I can do first. I can do all things. See, listen to what NIV says. NIV says, I can do all this through him. Uh, good news says, I have the, and this is where I got my whole message from, the strength or the confidence to face all conditions. See, what he's saying is, wherever I am, I have confidence that I can have the strength to do all things. See, this is not just I can do all things, whatever I set out to do. Yeah, that may be one interpretation. But here's another interpretation is that I have the strength. I have the strength to face all conditions. And usually what's the one thing that makes us doubt when we face uncertainty? The lack of strength. Watch this. Lean in close so one of, nobody would know that you're, that you're agreeing. How many of you have said, man, I don't know if I got strength to keep doing this. I don't know how much more of this I can take. Oh, I'm weary. I'm tired. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know how much more. Something got to give. But what this text says, the scripture, we love the quote, the one we put on T-shirts, on bumper stickers, on the back of our cars, the one we write on our sneakers and you see at football games, is literally saying, I have the strength to face all conditions. See, that confidence in knowing that you can do it, you will have the strength, that means that God will provide that which you need when you need it, regardless of the condition. See, if God allow, watch this, for it to happen, he's going to see you through it. If, 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 he, if, he, if, it, if it gets you to it, he'll see you through it. Right? He said, he said I, I'll give you the strength. I, I'll give you the hope, the joy, the peace that you need in order to come through it. And what Paul is saying is that you can be content because Christ is forever, but circumstances are temporary. Somebody hear me tonight. Circumstances are temporary, but Christ, that is forever. Christ is forever. So what he's saying is, is that, 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 that you can still have this contentment and say like Paul, I, whatever I'm up against, I have the strength to face all conditions. I have the strength to keep going. Listen to this. I can do. I have the strength. In other words, all the things you set out in front of you, whatever circumstances are, here's what the conclusion of Paul says. This is what Paul is saying. I've concluded I can do all things. I've concluded I have the strength. What have you concluded since you're in relationship with God? I know you said I've never been in a pandemic before. I know you said I've never been quarantined like this. What have you concluded about God? Paul says, I have the strength to face all conditions. Paul says, no matter what comes my way, there is no doubt in my mind. He did not say, I hope I can have the strength. He didn't say, I think I can do all things. Paul says, I can do all all things. And let me tell you something, beloved. When you've done some things that you know you could not have done, and you know and understand that you had some circumstances that you never thought you were going to make it out of. But when you are connected to a God, then you can declare like Paul, I can do 
all things. What Paul is saying, I have the strength to face any trial, to face any circumstances, whatever evil propensity will come my way, I have the strength to endure. I, he says, I've learned to be content, so now I got the strength to be able to endure. No temptation that can come to me that I don't have the strength to overcome. No fear can arise in me that I don't have the strength to overcome. No problem can come at my doorstep that I don't have strength to be able to overcome. He says, I can overcome. Now, now let's go a little further. Because what he says is, I, I, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things. I can do all things. He's expressing this confidence that he can't, watch this, have a low perspective of himself when you're connected to an all-powerful God. Let's back up. You can't have a low self-expectation for you, yourself, when you're connected to an all-powerful God. Paul says, listen, I know who I'm connected to. So therefore, I can do all things. He's not saying just him. We're going to deal with that in just a minute. He says, but I, I'm going to tell you this. I can do all things. I'm going to have the strength because every single day we serve a God who keeps giving us strength. Morning by morning, his mercies are new. He renews our strength daily. So therefore, what he's saying is, I need you to understand that there's a confidence you got to have to say, I can do. Matter of fact, say it out your mouth. Say, I can do. Say, I can do. Those three words, I can do all things. I have the strength to face all conditions. There is nothing that I will come up against that I cannot overcome. Listen to this. He says, when, when, you, when, when you know what God is trying to do in your life and you know what God is trying to do, he, he, says, he says, you'll stop saying, I can't do. Or stop saying it, it ain't going to work. No, no, no. Watch this. You will have some fresh expectation. I need to say this, y'all. I need y'all to hear me. We're living in a day and time and season that, that we must move forward with clear clarity on hearing God's voice. We're going a direction in a way that we've never gone before. So you need to make sure that whatever conditions come your way, you are listening to God. You're not trying to act like you've gone this way before because you haven't gone this way before. You need to be totally dependent on God and your confidence needs to be in a God that says no matter what comes in this time of uncertainty, I have the strength. I can do it. Are y'all listening to me? He says, no matter what come, I can do it. The odds may be stacked against you, but I can do it. You may not know which direction to turn, but I can do. You may not know how you're going to make it, but I can do. Listen to what he says, all things. Now, let me just say this real quick. He says, all things. Let me, let me, let me just unpack this. He says, I can do all this through him that gives me strength. I have the strength, as good news says, to face all conditions. Uh, the, the message says, I, whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything. <laughs> see, see, all things means that whenever you're going through something, your attitude says, whatever it is, I'm going to make it through it. I told you there's going to be a different look on this text tonight. Well, it's not just you can have the strength to go do whatever you want to. And that's another whole interpretation because if you think you can have the strength to go do whatever you want to, you got to make sure that whatever you're trying to do is lining up with God's word and God's will. That's another sermon, another, another, another teaching another time. What I'm dealing with tonight is the strength to be able to face all conditions because all means all. That means whatever circumstances you face, when you know what God's word says, then you then can pray his word, believe his word, and watch this. The word makes the circumstances line up with that. Let's move forward. See, see, see. He says, I can do, I have the strength to do, watch this, all things. Now, now let's go a little further. Oh man, time is rolling. He says, let's go a little further. I have the strength. I have the ability to do all things. This means that no matter what the condition, Paul teaches us to, in order for you to preserve your contentment, you have to have an attitude, a mindset that says, I'm going to get through this. See, discontentment says you're not going to make it. 
Contentment says you're going to make it through. All right. Watch this. Rounding home. Y'all a good class tonight. Rounding home with a little time on the clock. Watch this. He says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. That's NIV. Good news says, I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. Stay with me. It's going to get good. The message says, whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Here's the last point. Last point. Check this out real quick. He says, if you're going to have strength for all conditions, listen to the last point. You better acknowledge, you better recognize that Christ strengthens you. Why is this so important? Paul says, I have learned, whether up or down, whether on top or on the bottom, I've learned that I have the strength to face all conditions through the strength that Christ gives me. All right. Let, let, okay. All right. He says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. By the power that Christ gives me. I can make it through anything through the one who makes me who. See, what Paul is saying, I know who makes me who I am. I'm, I have not gotten this thing twisted. I have not become arrogant in thinking that it's me that's doing this. No, 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 no. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have the strength to face all conditions. Why? Because Christ has given me strength. He gives me the power. Let me let you know, beloved, the key to contentment, the key to you understanding that you can do it, that you have the strength to face all conditions, it is knowing that, that, that God Almighty is the source of your strength. I know we've had a point similar to this before, but God dropped this in my spirit today, and I need to reemphasize it tonight, that God alone is the strength of your life. He is the strength. He is the one that gives you the power, watch this, to face all conditions, and he is the one that gives you the strength to be able to stay content. No wonder Paul says, I've learned the secret. It's a secret that most people don't learn. Most people don't learn how to be content because they're so busy trying to have strength in themselves and not in God. Lord, have mercy. Talk, Doc. Listen, you got to understand your strength is in God. It's not in you. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how many degrees you have. I don't care how anointed, appointed, called that you may be. You need to realize that God is the source of your strength. You are, we are nothing without him. We are feeble without him. We need the strength of God. We need his strength every single day. If you're going to face every condition, every circumstance, every situation, you need the strength of God every single day. Paul says, I've learned this. I've learned. You want to know how I stay content? You want to know how I can say I can do, I can face all circumstances and situations? It's because he's given me strength. He's given me power. He's given me the ability to do what I know I cannot do on my own. Glory to God. He's given me what I need to make it. God is the strength of my life. He is the one that keeps me going when I want to quit. He is the one that keeps me going when I'm weak, when I'm feeble, when I'm frail, when I'm ready to throw in the towel. He is the one that is the energizer behind me living, moving, and breathing. When I wake up in the morning, I'm frustrated saying, what in the world? He's the one that reminds me, I woke you up this morning. I put breath in your body. Blood is warm, running warm in you. He is the one that reminds me and reminds you and I that he is the source of our strength. He is, he is the one, watch this. If he made us, he strengthens us. 
He is the one that gives us the strength, the power, the wherewithal, the tenacity, the fortitude to be able to face every condition and keep on moving. As a matter of fact, somebody put that in. Say, keep on moving, don't stop. No, I know that's soul to soul, but that's good teaching tonight. Don't stop. Keep moving because God gives you strength. And the Bible says, he says, so that you can make it through anything. Glory to God. Because he is the one who makes you who you are. Here it is. Time's up. He says, I'm content. I've gone through a lot because I realize who is the source of my strength. I realize that, watch this, that, that, that provision and strength comes from God. I realize then, watch this, that this is the power that transforms the heart and frees the mind. Come on, somebody, somebody lean in. Lean in. Because somebody, you're discontented and you have discontentment. But if you could just get a revelation of the fact that God gives you strength, that is the power that will transform your heart and free your mind. Your mind will stop racing, trying to figure stuff out. Your mind will stop wondering how things are going to work out. Your mind will stop saying things like, I can't wait till things get back. Listen, beloved, it's not getting back to what you're thinking. You got to have faith and fortitude to say, even in a new reality, even in new circumstances, even in a new understanding of what life is, I have the strength to keep on going. Watch this, because if you relegate God only to what has been, then what you're saying is that you don't have the strength for the next condition. You know, I'm, I'm closing here. I remember the year 2K. Y'all probably remember this too. It was, you know, the, everybody had this dilemma when, when we went from 19 to 22,000, everybody thought the computers were going to do everything but blow up and things weren't going to work. And we had this bubble that everybody was scared of, wondering what was going to happen. And, and people were afraid of how life would be in 2K, beyond 1999. Maybe that's why Prince said we're going to party like it's 19. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but, but people were worried on how things were going to shift over into, 20, into 2000s. And here's what's interesting. What they feared, what they worried about, didn't even happen. Things shifted. And they had to adjust. But watch this. That means they had a new reality. And the same strip that helped them in 1999 was the same strip that carried them over 2020. 20, 20, 2000. So here's the, here's the kicker. We got to understand that no matter what the reality becomes, we will have strength to face it. Don't, don't try to make the new reality the old reality. Just know God gives you strength to be able to face that reality. I'm done. He says then, Paul says, you turn to Christ for strength. Let him give you the strength. Because watch this. If, if God has enough power to heal, to deliver, to set free, to open blinded eyes through Jesus Christ. If God has enough power to allow his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, to be resurrected on the third day, to be now sitting at the right hand side of the Father. If God has that type of power to have the, the stars flung up in the sky, if God has that type of power, don't you think he has power to give you strength so that you can face all conditions? And when you have that strength, you have learned the secret of being content. I'm closing here, you want your joy to stay, un, stay, con, stay intact? Keep your contentment. He gives you strength. You want your peace to stay there? Remember, he gives you strength. You want your joy and your hope to be up? Remember, he gives you strength. I don't care what it is. Paul says, I need you to understand, I got a firsthand encounter of what it's like for him to give me strength. That means when he gives you strength, nothing or no one can watch this, take away the strength that God gives you. He keeps on giving it. He keeps on providing for it. He keeps on making sure that you have just what you need. I'm closing right here. But when, when God gives you strength, as Paul says, it's for all conditions. Not just the good ones, but for all conditions. Could you imagine living your life 
with such consistency and contentment, not because things don't change in your life, but could you imagine having such a faith in God, such a confidence in God, such a trust in God that you're willing to declare, I am content in all circumstances. I can do all things or I have the strength to face all conditions. Could you imagine trusting God at that level? Why? Because you know he's the one who gives you strength. Maybe Paul understood that the same God that gave him strength when he was in Acts chapter 16 in prison and at midnight he began to sing praises him and Silas. Maybe he began to realize the same God who gave him strength then is the same God who gave him strength now. Maybe Paul realized the same God who gave him strength when he was shipwrecked and they made it on broken pieces. It's the same God who will give him strength. Now, maybe Paul understood that when he was bitten by a viper and he shook it off and threw it into the fire and kept on teaching that the same God who gave him strength not to die from the bite of a snake would be the same God who would give him strength now. I want to let you know if God has given you strength time and time and time before, he's going to give you strength now. I can do all things. I have the strength to face all conditions. Listen, I'm done. I want to pray for you tonight. This has been in my spirit all day. I want to pray for you tonight because I sense in my spirit that we are getting weary. And the Bible says, do not be weary in well-doing. In due season, you'll reap if you think not. And we got to be careful, y'all, because we're not, we're, we will allow our discontentment, our frustration to make us get lax. Here's what I mean by that. You know, uh, uh, we get all kinds of reports coming out. Oh, so these, the easing this and the easing that, open that up. Watch this, y'all. Things have not changed. And we got to understand our trust is still in God. And we still have to do the right thing. We still have to be responsible. But at the same token, keep remembering that God gives you strength. I want to pray for you tonight, then we're going to give. But I sense in my spirit, even as I was preparing this today, and when God spoke it to me, he said, you need to let my children know, let believers know that I'm giving you strength to face all conditions. I want to pray, then we'll give, but hear me. You will be strengthened. Keep your contentment. God, I come in the name of Jesus praying for contentment. Praying, God, that we won't become discontent and that we won't try to do things in our own power and our own strength. God, it's all about you. It's not about us. God, thank you that you've taught us over and over and over that you give strength to us, that you're the source of our strength, that you're the one that makes sure and makes certain that we're able to keep moving. God, I pray tonight that, that you will continue to confirm your word, not only in me, but to your people. God, continue to give me the words to speak that encourages them to keep moving. God, I come against the spirit of discontentment. I come against the spirit of, of worry. I come against the spirit of, of frustration. I come against the spirit of trying to rush to do things, God. God, I pray now for a spirit of patience, a spirit of contentment, to be thankful for just another day above ground. God, you, you told the disciples through Jesus to, to, to say thank you for this day, our daily bread. Give us this day, God. God, we're not worried about the future. God, we know that, 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 that worrying about the future is putting a down payment on something we may not even see. So God, we, we thank you tonight. And we pray, God, that we will stay focused on you. God, keep giving us strength to face all conditions so that we remain content, whether full or hungry, whether too much or too little, whether up or down. Because God, we have the strength to face all conditions. We love you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, beloved, if you prayed that prayer tonight, I want you to, as Paul said, learn to be content. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Learn it. Study it. Force yourself to be content. Your life will be so much better. It'll be so much smoother. You'll have a smile on your face. You'll stop waking up mad and going to bed mad. You'll stop saying how much longer. 
You'll stop saying stuff like, I can't wait to this. No, live your life right now. Enjoy every day. You're in the house. Spend more time with him. Stop saying, I can't wait till I get back to this. No, spend time with him now. Study your word now. Enjoy his presence now. My voice going up. I'm getting excited. <laughs> now, enjoy it. Enjoy your family now. Spend time with them now. That's all I have, beloved. My time is up. Listen, real quick, I want to encourage you. Thank you so much, week in and week out, uh, for your giving. But before we give, I want to encourage someone, if you're watching us and you become a, like to become a part of our, 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 our community of faith uh, our, our, and our e-campus, you may not even be in the New Jersey area. You may not even be in the East Orange area. And wherever you're watching from, we would love for you to connect with us. Listen, before you jump off, I want to give you an opportunity to give. But if you're watching, you want to join and become a part of our ministry, you can simply text 1 to 474747 uh, for salvation. Uh, you can text 2 to 474747 for rededication or 3 to 474747 for uh, membership. Or you can simply inbox us on Facebook and we'll reach out to you and welcome you to the family. Listen, I know that's right, Sister Toya. I feel a run in my spirit, too. I'm trying to keep it together. Uh, so go ahead and give. Uh, uh, we're going to give real quick. Uh, bring, bring a seat unto the Lord. If this word has blessed you on tonight, I want you to sow into, into this word and sow into this season. Uh, because, listen, he'll give you strength for all conditions. Several ways to give. One, we have, if you're on our landing page, simply right above you, click Easy Tide or either give the fine, you're able to give that way. Or if you would like to use Cash App, simply dollar sign, uh, New Hope EO, and you're able to give that way as well. Thank you week in and week out for your benevolence, for your generosity. I appreciate you being a mature church as we continue to move forward. I pray uh, that each and every time that the word blesses you and that as we continue to move forward in the things of God, that you are able to receive what God has for your life. Listen, we're going we're gonna to pray. Can y'all do me a favor? Can we thank God for our first lady as always hooking it up, making sure that we are doing exactly what God calls for us to do. And we thank God. Give us your heart, first lady, real quick. Amen. Bless you, Sister Johnson. Had a rough day yesterday getting started and we needed that prayer. God bless you, Sister Johnson. We're going to pray. Uh, we'll pray out and then we, God bless you. Somebody said great teaching. God bless you, Sister Perry. Amen. Help you stay focused. The word you needed tonight. Bless you, Sister Janice. Amen. God bless you, Sister Peace. God bless you. Look, I pray everyone have, a, have an amazing night. Just going to get some virtual hugs tonight. Look, we're praying for you, y'all. Let's be smart. Be safe. You know, our people, we are a, a very vulnerable population. Let's be smart, y'all. Just because they open it up don't mean we got to go out. Just be, And that's wherever you're watching at. If your state is open where you're watching from, just, just let's, let's, let's. God gives us strength. He also gives us wisdom. Don't say that ain't faith. No, faith Faith is having a sound mind. Amen? Amen. So if you were blessed, come on, put that in. Put in if you were blessed so we'll know. God bless you, Sister Pettigrew. Bless you, Sister uh, Joanne, Sister Kitty. Love you as well. She said, love you, First Lady. Uh, bless you, Sister Maxine. Amen. Bless you, Sister Jackie. Cousin, thank you. God bless you, Cousin Jackie. Amen. I know that's right. Keep pressing on, Sister Audrey. Virtual hugs to you as well. Love you. God bless you. Deacon BJ, God bless you. You and your family are content. God be praised. I know that's right. Amen. Bless you, Sister Rice. Amen. Sister Jewel said, uh, God bless you, First Lady. Amen. Stay connected with us. Make sure you give whenever you log off or you can do it now. Thank you, Lady Tracy. Sister Wellington said, big ups to First Lady. I know that's right. I told y'all she's amazing. Uh, huge shout out, amen. We thank God for all of the New Hope staff and, and, and members and leaders. We're praying and continuing to lift them up in prayer. Amen. I know that's right, Sister uh, Ernestine. Stay home. Yes. Sister Shelby, God bless you. God bless you, Sister Christine. Sister Sandy, hey, good to see you on. Hey, love you too, Sister Julianne. Hey, to Chase Mace and Lady Tracy. Amen. Love and miss you too, Sister Carter. Amen. Your mother-in-law, Sister Rosa Glover, is asking for prayer. Amen. We pray right now for Sister Glover, Sister Rosa Glover, that you will continue to touch her in Jesus' name. Give her exactly what she needs in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. All right. Love and miss y'all. I know that's right. God bless you, Sister Kim. Amen. Amen. I know that's right. Let us not tip the protection of our God. You are so right, Sister Michelle. You're so right. You're so right. Don't, don't say, oh, the Lord. No, nah, don't be talking about I'm going to take my mask. No, trust God. Stay doing what you're supposed to do. Sister Epps, always a pleasure. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Goggins, God bless you. Hey, welcome, Sister Patricia Hall. Sister Joanne Lucas. I know that's right. God bless you. Sister Marie Jane. Sister Christina Smith. Sister Mary Miles. God bless you. I've been so blessed by the word. Enjoy your teaching. Bless you, Sister Ash. That means a lot. We really seek to, to, to bring the word in a way that is, is captivating, but a way that also propels us to become what God wants us to be. Bless you, Brother Austin, Brother James, Sister Judith. Amen. Sister Joyce Pickett, God bless you. You needed that. God be praised. I needed that too. Just to, Because it's so easy to be discontent. You're so right. We need that. To, a reminder, be content. Stay content, y'all. Stay content. All right? All right. Bless you, Sister Beverly. Amen. God bless you, Sister Tina. Amen. God bless you, Sister Mia. Amen. Hey, Father Law is watching. Amen. Mr. Robbie, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. I was a little late tonight. Oh, uh, that's all right. You got it. Hey, the good thing, you were a little late. The good thing about what we're doing, you can pull it right back up, hit the replay. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Yep, faith comes by here. I know that's right, Sister Kitty. Dr. Hick, I love how you make segues into regular music every now and then. <laughs> Listen, Sister Deborah, you know, I'm going to keep it real. I'm, I'm a real pastor. I'm, I'm a real person. I love music. And so, you know, whenever I can, you know, intertwine and bring it in, I do. You know, because we are, I, I'm a regular person. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Mel's parents. Hey, all right. Mel's parents, okay, God bless you. Sister Inez Martin, bless you, bless you. Troy Trainham, God bless you. Hey, God bless you, Brother Troy. Glad you were on, man, glad you were on, glad you were on. Sister, uh, Sister Patricia Hall, love you, amen. Sister Michelle Manson, thank you, First Lady, for your virtual gifts. They are appreciated even virtually, amen. Love you, First Lady. Love. Hey, 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 that's Dr. James Simmons of the First Good Samaritan Church in Maryland. Love you, Dr. Simmons. Praying for you and the congregation there. Tell mom I'm so excited. She rung that chemo bell with her last one. We thank God for the healing uh, of, of Mother Simmons. Amen. Amen. Shout out to the whole Simmons crew in Maryland. Love y'all, man. Better late than never. I know that's right. I know that's right. Hey, Chase and Mace, I will let them know. Sister Pettigrew, I will. Okay. Keep the Pettigrew family in your press. I will do that, Sister Pettigrew. I'm believing for you all now in Jesus' name. Sister Latoya, God bless you. The bellies are holding down that run. Hold that run down because, you know, we may have us a running Sunday, one Sunday, where everybody just get up and run and, and take a camera and just film it. And maybe not. We're going to do something. Amen. Truly enjoyed that word. God bless you. Amen. Amen. All right. Listen, we're going to jump off. Just want to give you shout outs. Love y'all so much. Thank y'all for being faithful to this week in and week out. Thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, we, we'll put the re, uh, repost up on YouTube. So I encourage people they can do that. I know that's right. Your first lady is the bomb. I know that's right. Bless you, Dr. Simmons. Pray. I will do that. Pray for uh, the Span and Lucas family. Don't forget, we'll be right back here on Friday for our prayer at noon. And we're excited about that. In Jesus' name. Love you as well, Sister Rice. Amen. Amen. Who's this? Reverend Hinton, I'm not a member of New Hope, but my husband. And enjoy your teaching. Hey, Sister Wanda. Wanda Gibbs left which? God bless you. God bless you. It's okay. We welcome. We love all those who stop by and show us love. If you're being blessed by the teaching and preaching, keep on coming around. We love to have you around in Jesus' name. So we welcome you. And we welcome uh, your husband uh, to, to enjoy the preaching and teaching. Amen? Amen. Gonna hold you to that. Right? <laughs> I know that's right, Sister Jenny. Sister Jenny, it would take you time. I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> I'm content at home, Sister Louise. I am too. Have my moments, but I'm content. I'm content. I'm content. I'm content. We Because we, we ain't gonna play with this thing. All right, we're done. God bless y'all. Have a great night. We will see you 
on Friday at noon for prayer. Be blessed. Until next time, we're Ignite Hope and Empowering Peace.